I think we live in, uh, with, through all the digital networks, and we live in a platform economy. And uh, because of the platform economy and the networked economy, which is my preferred term, uh, we can connect to everything. And uh, we must not confuse this with uh, the term sharing economy. We, uh, maybe you could connect and we can sh uh, share uh, cars, we have Car2Go, we have uh, Snapcar, and these are all platforms where uh, we could share, and so we, we actually move into what Rifkin said, the age of access, so we can share products and services. Uh, but there is, uh, to the term uh, sharing economy, is an association of uh, sharing like friends uh, in friendship mm -hmm. I share with you uh, maybe you can borrow or uh, my camera or uh, my car or whatever and um, some of these platforms uh, use uh, the f um, uh, the sharing in that connotation and uh, make a, a good, you know, a, a good performance on, you know, we into the sharing economy. And I think this uh, this term sharing economy is very, very confusing. I think sharing and economy is uh, contradictio in terminus. Um, I think we are still a lot of these companies are still their their purpose is to make money, and is not to to create a better world. Uh, maybe to create an easier world, but not a better world. But is there something wrong with creating a better world and also making money? No, 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 not at all. But uh, but uh, don't pretend you have an idealistic uh, purpose. And so my objection is this idealistic purpose. Now I embrace uh, the uh, uh, you know new platforms and uh, value networks I consider uh, for instance Airbnb as a value network it's a platform that connects uh, you know in 2008 uh, we know the whole history of Airbnb and it it enabled uh, owners of their house who had you know high mortgages and in the uh, real estate uh, crisis it enabled them to rent out their house and uh, you know and to make a little money to pay their mortgage, it enables uh, you know the new urban uh, citizen uh, to to live like a local. It's a very attractive uh, value proposition, and uh, Airbnb enables uh, people that have houses with people that want to travel. So I, uh, you know, I think it's a great platform. It's also uh, a social platform where, you know, I was in uh, in Paris and I rented an Airbnb. I need to give a presentation, and my host uh, was a legal student, a French legal student. So uh, I could, by talking to her, I could improve my presentation and get rid of some of the German words and English words into French words. So. There's a capital exchange, mm. uh, it's a social capital, there's an exchange. But we must not confuse that, uh, that as, a, as, a, as a high uh, part of the, of the transaction. I think, uh, you know, people want to travel on, on an, on an, uh, in a different country. We don't always want to the same hotel. Mm -hmm. And the same hotel, which is 100%, 200% predictable. And I think it's an enormous wake-up call for hoteliers, for uh, for hotels internationally in the world. But what you see happening is that all these hotels are putting their uh, their heels in the sand, uh, and they go into the resistance instead of learning from these platforms and say, okay, we must maybe we must personalize our experience more and uh, the customer experience more, the guest experience more. Maybe we must make it more local and more, more engaged. Uh, but uh, to cut it short, uh, I think uh, these platforms, if they pretend uh, that they're in the sharing economy, they are 
platforms uh, that enable uh, to connect people and to do business and which makes it that society uh, it become, the economy becomes more horizontal and less hierarchical. It's yeah. not a supplier and a customer. No, we're all connected and, and that is hap that's the structural change that's happening. And we must always review it from the structural changes and see what's and not on the incidental level. And 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 what way do you think that that existing uh, hoteliers have to respond on that? Because uh, the first question is: is it really a threat for them? Because uh, everybody says, but I have no idea. And the other way is: okay, if it is, and what way can they uh, benefit from the, the also the new way people are getting used to travel? So the change in demand also. Uh, bring it uh, into a, 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 a opportunity? Yeah, well, the, well, the first of all, you know, the, ho the hoteliers that go into the resistance, uh, you know, uh, I would invite them to think about what's really happening. Uh, now there has been, uh, and we have done uh, a, a research study, we have done a literary uh, research study to all the research that done on Airbnb. And uh, one of the outstanding research projects is in Texas, where um, uh, they uh, uh, put all the listings of Airbnb and they scanned them and they, they built a scraper and uh, all the listings and then compared the prices of hotel rooms. And uh, the main result is that the, uh, uh, the large brand hotels uh, with uh, hotel chains uh, strong brands, uh, conference rooms, and all sorts of facilities and services really are not affected by the uh, by the Airbnb offerings. It is the medium hotels in the lower price mm. segment that are really have uh, are suffering a, an impact of uh, 10 to 12 percent uh, of their income, and they have to really review, rethink, reshape uh, what's their position in the market. Um, the the other interesting thing is that uh, Airbnb claims um, uh, that their impact on social innovation and uh, social entrepreneurship is is large, and that the average urban citizen uh, Airbnb visitor spends more money uh, than a, a normal uh, hotel guest. And uh, mm. we cannot find any evidence that is true. I mean, uh, uh, Airbnb is not open and not transparent about their figures. I mean, uh, there's a lot of transparency in the platform itself. But if, if you look at the platform, I mean, the platform is, you know, I mean, you can analyze platforms to uh, the factor of what's their higher purpose and the uh, second factor, who's in control. Now, Airbnb is in total control of their platform. It invites the, the guest and the host. They're dependent on the quality of the host. And, uh, but they control, as you know, they control the whole communication mm. between guests. And, uh, and it's, it's all been within the Airbnb platform, which is understandable because otherwise it would, they would lose their business. Yeah. From a business point yeah. of view, it's very yeah. understandable. Yeah, yeah. So it's always a real struggle uh, because in the end, you want to provide a good solution. Uh, yeah, you, you also want to build a sustainable model, and it's also what something that's really see in the in the collaborative economy, or just how you want to call it, um, that there are uh, people who are really in there for the money. But I think that's not really sustainable because in the end, they, they make really sh uh, short-term decisions, and most of the time, short-term decisions are not the best decisions, or they're uh, into the collaborative economy for for doing the right thing, <clears throat> but then they're doing great things, but they're also not sustainable because they have no idea how to build a sustainable model, so they can also uh, keep on going with doing the right thing. So, so it, it's, it's always a really interesting balance uh, well, between the, those two. Well, I, I develop you know, on, the, on, on the basis of uh, the work of uh, the peer-to-peer -peer foundation of Michel Balance. He had a model where he he sort of separated, he had a dimension where he separated for the commons, for the public good and for the private good, so the co for, uh, commercialization. So if you sort of uh, look at all these networks and uh, organize these networks around the first dimension, which is, is it for the public good? Is it for a better society? Is it for 
uh, the commons, or is it for private uh, possession and the profit for uh, a few people, right? That's one dimension. And if you can separate, then I would say, um, you know, a lot of uh, networks that claim to be into the collaborative of sharing economy are on the other side because they're in for the commercial and not for the public good. Now, you can also t take another dimension. So the, then we have two dimensions. The second is open systems and closed systems. And then actually it becomes very clear um, that in the um, right bottom of this matrix, uh, uh, Michel Bowens uh, differentiates uh, netarchical capitalism. It's the Facebooks, it's the Ubers. Uh, we might discuss if Airbnb belongs in there, but I think in the end they are also into it for the money. And uh, uh, then it becomes clear that you have netarchical capitalist, you have niche peer-to-peer uh, -peer value networks where there are eBay's, where there are marketplace, uh, Etsy, all sort of communities that make it possible for people to trade with each other. Uh, we have, in my opinion, the truthful uh, sharing or collaborative. I would prefer the word collaborative economy. And then we have on the left bottom where there is a closed system, but for the public good is the collectives, like the Mondragon uh, collective, where you, you know, sort of, you know, uh, a sort of, you know, what, a, a sort of constructive communism, where you share <coughs> with each other and it, it's for everybody. Yeah. But it's not for the to total society, no, it's for the Mondragon collective. Yeah, yeah. Where it's closed. Okay. And I think that model helps uh, to dis demystify a lot of uh, uh, networks that claim to be in the collaborative economy. I mean, the worst association is Uber and uh, collaborative economy, right? Mm -hmm. It's a network system. And uh, let me also elaborate on the why these companies get such a scale. And it's the scalability is because of the, the very attractive value proposition, the very attractive value proposition in terms of, uh, you know, a, a good service, a good experience. Then the, the second factor is the seamless access. I mean, now because of technology, uh, they have, you know, uh, at Airbnb, uh, you have a, a, click, a button which says Reserve Direct. Now, if you can say yes or no as a host to Reserve Direct, but if they Reserve Direct, I don't have any control of who is coming into my home, right? Mm -hmm. So the interfaces <coughs> become smarter and smarter based on neuroscience, based on intuition. Uh, so the interfaces with the, the, the chain of decisions that we make as a customer become uh, more uh, hidden, mm -hmm. more unconscious, and uh, I think there's an ethical issue there. And then the third success factor is the accelerating networks where people uh, recommend each other, and that's the propeller, that's the snowball, and those three factors uh, and the other is the leveraged assets. I mean, Airbnb, neither Uber have taxis. Uh, Airbnb have no rooms. And so uh, yeah. the yeah. whole system yeah. has flexibility and traction. Yeah, yeah. but talking about ethical discussions, <coughs> I guess, uh, the, uh, let's take Uber, so we, because it's always a really uh, good example uh, and also a really clear example, because everybody also knows it. Um, in the end, they say, okay, it's the biggest uh, transportation company in the world, but they don't own a car, the same like Airbnb, the biggest uh, accommodation uh, company in the world without uh, owning any uh, rooms. Yes. Uh, but in the end, uh, like with Uber, the cars are there. So the fact that they are not investing in cars, 
doesn't mean the cars aren't produced or aren't uh, making accidents, aren't killing people. Uh, no, 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 yeah. And I think that's also a really interesting discussion, uh, also maybe for, for, for another time, uh, to see, okay, but in the end, uh, what is the true price? And also can... What is? What is, it, what is the true price people are paying? Uh, like w w when a, a Uber driver, um, they, and they see at the end of a trip, they, they see, okay, I made 10 euro or 5 euro. But, but can they really see what the real risk is they're taking? Uh, so, uh, well, well, the thing is that these business models of these uh, platforms are not properly analyzed. They're not analyzed from uh, properly analyzed in the total ecosystem. They should be analyzed into terms of strategy, but they only are analyzed in terms of performance or perception. Uh, and uh, if you look at the revenue, but you must also look at the risk and mm -hmm. make a risk analysis and uh, a damage. You know, what is the uh, is the economic? Do they take value away? Mm -hmm. Me and uh, people always uh, evaluate uh, those platforms on uh, the innovative service or the innovative performance and the disruption and everything. Yeah, but that's that also they're also they're really smart marketers. Uh, that, uh, look at the taxi world. So when you look in Amsterdam, TCA, well, they they're they are really almost handicapped <laughs> when talking about communication. When when you look at Uber and Nick from Uber, he's uh, he was the brand manager of Heineken for five years. The guy in front had talked of Uber. He was working for Morgan Stanley. Uh, so, 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 so they are complete different kind of kind of people, actors in a, 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 in a really old-fashioned branch, and they really know how to sell their story because they are really smart. Yeah. They're, they're they're not done. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, and they are uh, steps ahead of policymakers. So we hear, um, you know, if you um, and the interesting thing is that the response of uh, governments and municipalities, uh, the first response is resistance. And I think uh, we should study better, analyze better what the benefit is of these platforms, what you can learn from these platforms, and the amount of and how you can facilitate the innovating factor, the driving factor, and a sort of regulate the damaging factor, right? Yeah. So uh, my plea, my argument would be uh, to have you know research and deeper understanding mm -hmm. of these exponential organizations, mm -hmm. these platforms. What's their really intention? You know, what's their value con contribution? And to really objectively. Uh, uh, learn about how this can happen, what we can learn from yeah. it. I mean, society can learn from these networks. Yeah, yeah. These I'm networks really have fuel because there is a need for it. Yeah, yeah. Or they create a need for it. Yeah, I think uh, every time when I talk to scientists, they always say, every time when they present a the research, they say, okay, the conclusion is. We have to do more research, and I think. Wow, well, well, <laughs> but, no. uh, but but I think uh, what you're saying is, is is right. We really have to learn to understand better what's happening, and not only uh, are looking to the uh, to the populistic uh, short term uh, media, but really we don't, to think the about the emotional discussion doesn't help anything. Doesn't yeah. help anybody. But we must think and analyze in intellectually uh, and use our brains into what does this mean. How can it help us further? Uh, are there negative aspects? And can we sort of take away the negative aspects instead of trying to control the beast? Okay, I think that's a really good conclusion of our, of our talk. So <clears throat> thanks for the interview, Albert. Okay. It was a pleasure. I think we're going to nice do doing a, a second episode uh, okay. soon. And uh, yeah, have a good evening. You're welcome.